If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If a belief system makes you feel good in a way that doesn't seem natural or genuine, it's probably false. So, for instance, if you believe strongly in something without any evidence, and you double down on your beliefs when it becomes very apparent to most people that what you're saying is simply not true, then yeah, it's probably a belief system worth dropping. This would seem pretty obvious if we're talking about traditional religious beliefs, but this applies to any type of belief. At this time, it has become quite commonplace for people to believe strongly, without any evidence at all, that homosexuality and gender dysphoria are genetic, that we are born this way. I say we because I'm a gay man. Granted, there can be genetic or more likely epigenetic reasons for someone to be more left-brained, right-brained, anywhere between, but this doesn't necessarily correspond with sexual orientation or the feeling like someone is in the wrong body. Boys can have a lot of feminine qualities, and it doesn't have to mean that they're gay or that they have gender dysphoria. Same with girls who are masculine. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're lesbians or that they have gender dysphoria. Now, I'm not trying to suggest in any way that homosexuality and gender dysphoria are conscious choices. I mean, I'm sure that there are some rare examples where someone could say that they did consciously choose it, but, I mean, then again, if you look at jails, especially all-male jails, you can see some behavior there. But in general, you know, someone's sexuality or their gender identity, if it's different than, than what their sex is, isn't something that someone just sits down one day and goes, hmm, I think I'm going to be like this now. No, that doesn't happen. You know, no, nobody just chooses these things. Again, virtually nobody. <laughs> I, I'm sure that someone can come up with some examples that, that, that uh, you know, are the exception to the rule. So I think most of this is just caused by a mental reflex as a child a mental reflex to stimuli or a lack of certain kinds of stimuli. When boys are bullied for being too feminine, an easy reaction to that could be to just not want to be like those bullies and everything that comes with it. Again, maybe not a conscious choice, but it's just like, if you're treated like crap, why would you want to be like the people who treat you like crap, right? And then when little boys are taught that the desire to look at women, and if you do look at women in an objectifying kind of way, in a sexual way, that it's degrading to women and you shouldn't do it, then depending on the mindset of the kid, especially if it's someone who is obsessive about following rules, a reaction to something like that, being told that sort of thing a number of times, might be to, to make sure they never look at women that way. They want to be a good boy. When boys have no fathers and or they have no real connection with anyone that's a positive male role model, they, they don't, just don't have any positive male role models, you know, to look up to or to emulate or to bounce off of or anything, it can definitely have a negative effect on how they eventually define uh, masculinity and manhood for themselves, especially if they're naturally feminine. As I said, a lot of people have very, very strong beliefs, have a very strong belief system because it's, you know, I say belief system because it's based on something that has no evidence. They have strong belief systems that could easily rival traditional religion, and they don't even realize it. The strong belief that homosexuality and gender dysphoria are genetic, are something that people are born with, might as well be a religion. Which is why some people view the pride progress flag as a religious symbol. And it seems people want to spread this religion far and wide. Inserted into education, the government, corporate culture, and just about everywhere. Look, regardless of how you feel about homosexuality, lesbians and gays are pretty easy to accommodate in this society. It's easy to accept that some guys like other guys, some women like other women, and that upstanding, loving adult couples should be able to adopt. 
trans people just, as it seems, as it stands, they seem much harder to accommodate. You know, the goalposts will always move. It will never be good enough until we all believe the same things as they do about gender and have successfully changed the definitions of a dozen well-used words. And we're all happy about it, including children, and there are no microaggressions in sight anywhere. Yeah, that, that's not a realistic endgame. That's a fictional kind of endgame. There, there's no way to get to that point. You know, as I said in another video, you can't dictate how other people think of you. You, know, you can't demand how other people think of you. All you can demand is reasonable treatment as a human being, you know, and having the same legal rights as other citizens. You don't get to control people's thoughts. If you believe something, that's fine, but you can't expect everyone else to believe it as well. You can't call people terrible names and treat them like crap if they simply don't want to submit to your beliefs. I mean, you can, but you're not going to be viewed in a positive light by most people. And if you're at a point where you're becoming violent towards people who refuse to affirm your belief system, there's going to be a problem. People are simply not going to accommodate that type of behavior. The law will certainly not be on your side. Just saying.